Hi, everybody. Welcome back to episode number 25 today. Um, we're trying to get you in front of as many people as we can before the holidays. So I thank you for taking some time out and joining us. Uh, I have an awesome guest with me today. We're going to be discussing a lot and right along the lines of, you know, growing your accounting practice and our tax practice, following easy, ethical, systematic roadmap. So very excited. I have Thomas Gay with me today. He is the CEO and founder of InTheTribe.io. And so, Thomas, how's everything going? You're on the West Coast. Hey, fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Yes, I'm here in, in San Diego. Uh, it's a week before Christmas, and the sun is out, and the birds are singing, and it's over 80 degrees today. And what more <laughs> could a man ask for? Exactly, exactly. Beautiful day. So Thomas, tell us about yourself. Uh, excited to have you on here. You have a long track record of, of helping businesses and, and growing. And so uh, talk to us. Well, thank you. Um, I always love it when someone says, just tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a serial entrepreneur. And for me, that means I've started um, seven companies. Um, I've got a few years on my uh, keel or under the, the keel, as they would say. And all of my companies have been focused on helping people uh, grow and do a better job of uh, building their businesses. And my current business in the tribe, as uh, you've introduced it, is aimed at people building better collaborative relationships and getting out of the noise of the marketplace. By noise, we all know how much people will listen to your inbound message how much they block it, how much they prevent it. Well, we advocate that you're going to have to go back to the tried and true personal relationship building. So that's the mm -hmm. current focus, bringing people back into the process as opposed to think it just as a digital world and there's no place for, for people. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. there is a, a, a core um, element underneath all of this and it is at the foundation of my work in referral training. My last company was called refer.com. And I started and built that to over 5 million worldwide users, teaching professionals like you and I, like your audience here, how to get more new prospects and clients based on building relationships. There's a common thread in my life, relationships. And, um, and so prior to that, I built two previous companies that did the exact same thing, but in the days and ages of those, the technology tools and the training tools that we had, had then don't exist today. So the platforms change, but the message stays the same. And the message is people will do business with those who they know, like, and trust. So how do you build those relationships in a consistent recurring manner? So that's yeah. what it's all about. You're spot on with that. Right? It, it, it doesn't matter if you're, a te you know, every technical aspect of what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you know um, uh, every single process and way to do it. And then if they don't feel comfortable with you, it, it's going to be a very bumpy road. And yeah. so when in relationships, I mean, this is across, it's, People sometimes think relationship, it's, uh, you know, partner, spouse, wife, significant other, and, and that's it. But no, uh, you have to treat every aspect uh, of your work, your career, friends, uh, colleagues, family, and of course, your, your significant other. But um, so how do you, uh, how do you, where do you start, right? So do you, um, someone trying to figure out, you know, all right, let me focus on building a relationship and what do I do? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's really pretty, pretty simple. Um, if I were to ask the question, almost like you asked me, who are you? <laughs> okay, and if I start out with who are you, and then I evolve the questions. Now, I have to stop and listen to the answer, by the way. That's an important part in today's world. Um, a lot of people don't have any listening skills, but listen to the answer, and then it moves to further questions, what and why and how do you do what you do? And, and 
as I'm taking that information in, all of a sudden there's a trust building bridge that's emerging because someone cares enough to ask. Now there is a process that I teach that you need to do in order to create consistent, repeatable, systematic habits and then results. And uh, the, the, the process is, is um, one that says, if I were attempting to build a relationship with you, then before I get into that activity, I need to do some research on who you are and use gotcha. the technology and use the tools that are available to find out as much as I can. And the more I learn before we start and then bring that into the beginning or the starting so I relate to you better, the more likely it is that we're going to make this bridge come together on both sides of uh, wherever we, we begin from. Gotcha. 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 And so when, um, when, when clients are coming to you and asking about what, um, uh, what are some of the secrets to getting to uh, the people you know that you want to introduce you to the people who need you? I love how, that, how that's stated. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, let me, yeah, let me circle, uh, bring a couple of threads together into this tapestry. Uh, first of all, the number one problem people face in their professional world is the problem of getting more good quality clients or prospects to become clients. And that problem is, is everywhere and it's always um, born out of the fact that it's more and more challenging to get through to people. We talked a little bit about that, but as we uh, try to find people who want to work with us, what we're encountering are the barricades or the protections people put up to keep the noise out. Just ask yourself, how many emails have gone into spam that were in your inbox before you came into, into the office today? That's one of the protections, as many of them that we use. So the first thing that you need to do if you're looking to grow your business and overcome that number one problem is you've got to find people who you think might be open to introducing you to the people you'd like to meet, to the people they know. So how do you get them to open it up? I use the term digital Rolodex. You all have one of these. It's, you know, Apple or Android or whomever it is. If I can build trust with you in our relationship, I'm, I'll say 99% confident I can get you to open up your digital Rolodex and even take me through it name by name, asking me if I'd like to meet so-and-so and meet, meet this person. And the goal is to get that level of comfort in a relationship so that your audience becomes my opportunity and vice versa. It's a two-way street. It's always about give and receive. It's never about give, uh, give and never get back. It's never about going to get. It's always going to give. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of quite answered your question, but I, but I want to, to, to set the background that sets the expectation that if I focus on doing the right things with a few people, I don't need more than a few people because if you know 50 people who might be a good prospect for me to meet, and I know 10 of you, Chris, with 50 people, then all the opportunity I need is right in that small group of, uh, of 10. Mm -hmm. and so what I do is focus on teaching people what to do with those 10 people or those 20 people, whatever that number is that uh, is, is relevant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And in and, and working with, uh, I, I, across several, I've worked across several industries, right? Doing the same thing, client relations, speaking with clients on a daily basis, assisting them for 15 years. And uh, no matter what, what industry it is, referrals are a lifeblood, right? And, and 
if if customers are happy, clients are happy, they're going to uh, be willing to talk about you know their their secret you know and how they're doing it, and which leads me into um, a lot of the these uh, like networking groups. I I, uh, I find that in the accounting community they're not as prevalent um, as they are in other industries. Do you notice the same thing? And what are your thoughts on, on these types of groups? Oh man, I love working with the accounting industry for a few reasons. Um, no, number one, uh, well, I worked with a lot of the industry organizations, um, and, and so therefore I have a lot of friends in the industry. Uh, but the number one reason why I like working with the accounting industry is it's an industry whereby uh, the day-to-day -day practices are centered around a set of rules, a set of you can call them GAP, you can call them the IRS, whatever the rules are that fit your business, this is the right way to do things and you're committed to doing things the right way as a professional in this field. With that as a backdrop, when I teach people in this field what to do, they follow the rules. They like rails to run on, if you will. You know, they run on, they'll, they'll stay on the rails, but it's not just about constraining to rails. It is when they follow the rails, follow the roadmap, follow the recipe, they get better results than people who are just running and gunning. Other professions where you don't have those same roadmaps or rule sets. And so when a professional comes to a relationship with me where they are accustomed to doing the things that it takes to do in their business, and then they bring that mindset into doing the things that it takes to get referrals, they get referrals, they get results, and they get extraordinary success. And that's, that's one of the things that I get the greatest um, reward from is seeing people become successful. And, and so um, that's why I, 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 I teach this in so many places inside the financial services sector and um, in the, the accounting and tax sector specifically. Yeah, it, it, um, when I started uh, almost four years ago here, um, references were very few. I would say on 10 calls, um, zero to one were referred, right? And I saw that as a, as a big opportunity. And uh, now today, right, almost four, sometimes in a given week, five calls out of 10 that I'm, I'm speaking with are references. And it's amazing how you grow it over time, right? And, and so it, this, it, this is not an overnight process, right? You talk to 10 people, you're getting 10 references tomorrow. It's a practice. It's, it, it's part of your routine. It's part of uh, your approach. And over time, I mean, there's no set time limit, but over time you'll get the results that you're seeking, but you have to follow, like you're saying, and, 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 and doing it and living it, and it'll happen. And then it's a prime example of what I've done over the course of several years now and building relationships. Right. And people um, are, are they like you, they trust you. They're so much more comfortable to speak about um, how their success and, and, and share it with others, with other colleagues. And which um, which leads me into uh, working with in your in your network, learn how to turn your network into your net worth. Right. So talk to me about that and, and uh, uh, explain the, the steps. Um, behind you uh, mentioning that old. Well, yeah, I use the phrase, turn your network into your net worth because it is your, it is your network in which the opportunity to grow your success is resident, okay? It's your network where the people are present who if you can build the relationships that we're talking about, they will open up pathways and referrals and introductions for you to grow. And obviously the growth that we're talking about here for the most part are, is business growth. It's client acquisition, it's um, new customer uh, success. 
Now, there's a couple of threads that really magnify this inside of the industries that we're talking about today. One of the threads are, or is, that if you do a good job building that relational bridge, and I can come back and talk about the formula, there is a formula, but if you do a good job, client retention in this industry is very high. The switching costs for your clients is, are high, but the staying costs are low if the relationship and the customer satisfaction level are strong. So when you build a business based on turning your network into a set of producing assets, let's call them revenue producing assets, then it's gonna turn into growth. If you're a small shop with a couple of people working with you to help, and you wanna be a large shop with several professionals and more people, you can achieve that just by focusing on turning your network into a expanding asset base called satisfied clients. Absolutely. With the um, with the, uh, the the ongoing pandemic and and the um, virtual world and, and now across all industries and and specifically in the accounting industry, um, you don't have, you don't have to be fully virtual, but you have to be partially virtual. Yes. Have you found um, any changes or any different approaches, or you know you have your foundation is in place no matter what, but how are you um, adapting to the virtual environment and, and working with clients and, and, and giving suggestions and how to still grow without that person to person contact? Well, I think, I, th I think first, um, let me, uh, there's multiple questions in your question. And I think the distancing that's taken place through the effects of COVID have caused us to use more virtual tools. Mm -hmm. and just like we're using a couple of different platforms today. Okay, that's okay. Use technology. But the other thing that's very important here is because of the separation, social distancing, or whatever you want to call it, the impact on all of us, we have a greater hunger to have relationships that aren't like what they used to be. Okay, so that coupled with technology says the game has changed. The, the playing fields change shape. Maybe some of the players are, are different because I can now reach back to New York and have a dialogue as opposed to down the street. However, the human side of this hasn't changed at all. And if I do the relational steps, even though you're 3,000 miles away, those relational steps are just as effective in us doing this together as they would if I sat across from you at a coffee shop and we did those things. And in fact, I think the hunger for more relational long distance intimacy, if I could put those words together, is greater. <laughs> it's greater today because it's the counterbalance to our being apart. Now, yeah, go ahead. It's the steps that you need to take that I, I wanna put some emphasis on. And those yeah. steps are what create the planks on the road that lead to the bridge or that create the bridge. I don't know if you can put planks on a bridge, but they're, they're the, 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 the components that cause the bridge to form. Now, I, I find with the tools that are, the technology has always been there, right? Because remote working has been going on about 30 years by now. And some industries do not even have an office at whatsoever, right? And, and they've, um, which, which, which helped out the, uh, and, and formed the WeWorks, right? And the working spaces. And so you're absolutely right in saying that, you know, now that we've lost the person to person, you know, you, you have to be creative, but the tools are there. And, and, and if you enable them, empower these tools, it could be overwhelming, but once you um, have everything in place and your communication set, then you could speak to not, not only in your local area, your local state, but across the entire globe. 
I know people are realizing the the power of these the technology and reaching out to not um, just being a local, you know, accountant or tax uh, professional, but being, you know, a a, a uh, international, so, so to say, you know, and and so, but I feel that sometimes people could kind of rush into it and, and try to scale so fast. Um, when you're working with clients, what's your type of approach? Where uh, are you? You you find out right what their what what their uh, end goal is, but are you recommending they stay in a certain area, or are you always saying go national, you know, go big, or uh, how are you working with clients in that in that aspect? Well, there there's two threads. First of all, I work today with people all over the world. I, I, yeah, I held a Zoom meeting last week, a really simple meeting, I had. 70 people on the call. These are people I'm teaching this process to. And people on the call were from as far away as Norway, South Africa, India, Australia, and then North America. So um, the principles transcend culture and national borders. Okay. Uh, and, and to me, I think that's that's an empowering um, capability, technically speaking, that affects all of us, including the, uh, the audiences that we both serve. It's fantastic. Now, if I say it's Monday morning here, which it is in San Diego still, and I say, yep. oh, I need to get some more business because 2021 is coming and I want to grow. I want to add three people. Where I start, where I start is where I am and I instruct my clients to always begin with the people you know who you think would know the people you'd like to know okay so now who would who would that be I'll, I'll say it a different way always start with the people who are likely serving the people you would like to know Okay, so if uh, consider myself uh, a tax accountant and who would know the people I would like to know? Probably a financial advisor, an attorney, and you can name a few more uh, professions. So always start with that group of people who I'm already in some kind of contact with. So start with a small group of them. I used the name, the, the term 10 a few minutes ago. When I teach people how to do this, I tell them find 20, just 20. You might know 70, but start with 20. Because if you do the right thing with 20, then you're going to learn the practice and develop the habits to do it with 40 or 60. But if you shotgun it at 60 today, you're probably not going to embrace the the, the learning and the discipline and not go anywhere. So start small, learn how to swing the club, if you will, with the 20, get good at swinging that club using the golf analogy with the 20, and then you can take it to a larger game. So start with 20. And the very, very first thing you do with that group of people is you go find out everything you can about them on both a business and a personal level. For example, uh, you've got a, a beautiful Zoom background, so I can't tell much about your um, you personally from the background. Here. I like plants. <laughs> okay. However, if I happen to see diplomas and pictures of your kids on the wall and you with a, um, a trophy fish or maybe you've got a soccer ball that's on the bookshelf or something like that. The more I can learn about those kinds of things, those are the things that are going to drive my connecting with you on a personal level. I can get a lot of that out of, out of the internet. I go to LinkedIn and find out where most people went to school, mm -hmm. who they follow, what their passions are. I go to Facebook and see what they're doing there. And there's other platforms that are analogous to those. But mm -hmm. as I take those 20 and I 
determine, research, analyze what those elements are and start building the connection with you based on things you care about. You know, the family vacation that you took to the main um, seacoast last August. I know you didn't, but I could say it. But you went to the, and you're sitting there with a great big lobster dinner and a picture of that lobster. If I start and relate to you and ask, did, have you ever been to the Seawall restaurant there on Mount Desert Island? And next time you go, go there. Now I'm talking to you on your level. Yep. When, when you relate to me on that level, and I have a specific set of ways you do this relating, by the way, when you do this on this level, it's comfortable, it's personal, it begins to show you that I'm thinking about you. And after a certain number of times in making those kinds of outreaches, all of a sudden, a question forms in your head, Chris. That question is, gee, um, Tom keeps treating me differently. I must be special to Tom. That's called top of mind awareness. Mm -hmm. I must be special to Tom. I wonder what I could do for him. And that's when the power of reciprocity kicks into play. And mm -hmm. when that um, desire to um, give back or reciprocate comes into play, now it takes only a few weeks to create it and you follow the, the roadmap to get there. All of a sudden, you're, you're open to doing something that I would like you to do. And I'm going to give you a, um, uh, um, an analogy that we use. We always say that people will do business with those who they know, like, and trust. Okay. The steps that you're doing or I'm doing to connect with you about that lobster and that golf game and whatever else, the family vacation, that's building the know, like, and trust. However, on the end of the trust building, is now it's time for me to help you to reciprocate. And when I teach you how you can give back, that's when that desire you have to give back in, in, on your part is satisfied by you giving back things to me that you would like me to be happy about. And then this referral engine goes. And it's a pretty amazing, pretty amazing engine. Um, mm -hmm. and, Again, I'll reach back to an earlier stage of our dialogue today. We had talked about the financial services accounting profession. It's especially effective in that area, in that industry, because so few people in your industry do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But when you do, you stand out. You become such an attractive force that it just... Um, uh, it, it brings far greater results than it does over, uh, in, in industries on average, if I can say it that way. So mm -hmm. anyhow, uh, follow the roadmap and get ready because it only, it only takes six or seven weeks of this kind of activity with that yep. group of 20 and the results flow. Mm -hmm. Well said, well said. I think sometimes uh, clients will go into, go into it with, uh, you know, let's do the 60, let's go after 80 and see what sticks, right? Kind of just see what sticks on the wall type of approach. And, and, but that's not, that's not a good way to go about it. What you were saying is in, in the key word, building a relationship. It's important to start with a small amount and know them. Get to, get, to, get to learn them on different levels, personal and work. And I find that um, in, in working with clients or, or direct reports throughout my career, it's the smallest, smallest thing that you do to a client that could have a profound impact. Right? So and they will just, they will, it, it could just be remembering their birthday. Um, and they look at you and you're like, holy cow. Like, and it means a lot to them. Yeah, you save the money here, you save the money there, or um, you uh, wh whatever. It, uh, that's great, but when you just 
do something that the smallest thing, it may seem insignificant to you, but you feel like you should reach out and let them know, it'll mean the world to them. And people don't realize that that, that, that type of approach, that type of personal approach, it goes so much further um, than, and then, you know, these, uh, materialistic things. Um, and so I, I like that idea and the approach, you know, start small and then you grow. Right. Yeah. And, um, well said. And so the, uh, we have to, I uh, love to keep talking going along this, but we have to wrap up in a second here. And so, uh, the, uh, the roadmap, the approach, everything you do, right. Can you, uh, any final words uh, to the accounting community, our audience today, and a little bit about your business, and um, we'll go from there. Well, um, you know, uh, I, I love teaching, so Chris, I'm not making this a commercial, but you know, if somebody wants more information, I can give you that. However, what, what, I, what I do want to say is uh, I've I've connected the the principles of ethical marketing, and that's what I've been um, teaching because it is ethical as opposed to salesy or promotional. And that's why um, what I teach has been embraced as part of the CEU programs for different industries that I teach in. Um, but because it's relational, it's ethical, it's not about pitching and selling and manipulating. And, and everyone, I think, positively responds to that, or most people do. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's one thing I, I'm very proud of because um, it stands out in an otherwise noisy world. And then the, the second thing is if, if people want more, I have a very easy way for people to get involved and, and, you know, and I'd love to help more people if there's a possible way to do that. Absolutely. Well said, well said, Todd. It's a very humble person. I love it. And um, the, uh, my final thoughts uh, and a question for you in, in regards to, um, you know, us being offshore, you've worked with clients all over the globe, right? And so, as far as um, staffing and, and approaches and, and feedback and where do you see kind of offshore going forward? Um, just some thoughts and feedback on that. Well, I, I think it's such a natural place to be because technology connects us. From my perspective, relations, relationships are transnational, okay, transcultural. I mean, I'm teaching, I've got a gentleman in, in one of my training programs in Cape Town, South Africa. He's a, a French wow. who, who relocated to Cape Town a few years back. I met him in Cape Town. And in, gosh, four weeks in my program, he's getting referrals. So it's like, um, I think it, it fits into your and my business um, objectives very, very closely. So to me, that's, a, that's an enormous new world for us both. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The becoming virtual has realized the power of a, a global workforce, not just you know a local workforce or a national workforce, but a global workforce, and us all working together as one, you know, fighting off this COVID and 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 now helping each other grow. And you're knowledgeable, you're competent, um, and, and you're capable. It doesn't matter where you are, you know, and, and it's just a great story. South Africa, he's getting referrals. It doesn't matter where. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for joining today. And um, everybody, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Uh, we'll be posting this in case you came in later. If you missed it, this is episode number 25 of hashtag BKOT, build a kick-ass offshore team. Again, Thomas, thank you so much. Everyone else, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a happy holiday and most likely a good new year because I will not uh, be back again. And next year we will uh, be starting off with fresh new content and look forward to seeing everybody. Thomas, again, take care. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate you and, and your, your hosting me today. Absolutely. Anytime, man. Talk okay. soon. Bye-bye.